Thank you for listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, where we discuss all the news and games in the world of basketball. My name is Ben Brown. In the studio alone today, Pauline will, of course, be here tomorrow updating you as we go into the NBA trade deadline. We're going to talk about some rumors and some some potential trades at the end of the show. But first, the big news in basketball yesterday got dropped on us after we were done recording. So, of course, we're going to talk about it today. And that's Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson we talked about last week. He is, of course, back in the Lakers' front office. He said last week he wanted to call all the shots. He wanted to be in charge. Well, Jeannie Buss has definitely listened to what Magic has had to say. And he's basically giving him everything he wanted. Because Jeannie Buss literally got rid of Mitch Kupchak last year. He's been with the organization, or last last night, I should say. Because Mitch, Mitch Kupchak has been with the organization since 1970 and has been the Lakers GM for the past 17 years. And she also removed Jim Buss as the executive vice, vice president of basketball and promoted Magic Johnson to the president of the Lakers organization. She fired her brother for Magic Johnson. That literally says it all. Jeannie Buss gives Magic Johnson exactly what he wants. He's now the president of the Los Angeles Lakers. They have a GM opening. Well, not for long because Magic has come in and already making moves. He's going to hire sports agent Rob Palinka to become the next GM of the Lakers. So the Lakers are basically trying to replicate what the Golden State Warriors did with Bob Myers, who's their current general manager. He was a sports agent. Rob Palink is also the agent of Kobe Bryant, who Magic has expressed interest in bringing into the organization to be part of the front office. So they're trying to really do everything they can to replicate the Golden State Warriors here. You bring in an agent as your GM. He has some familiarity with the players, a good relationship with some of them, and to try and lure some people in. And that's exactly what Magic Johnson is here as the president of the team. He's going to try and lure people in free agency. He's going to try and recruit people. The Lakers are not a good team right now. They've missed out on a ton of free agents. They have a good young core with Brandon Ingram, D'Angelo Russell, and Julius Randle. Even Jordan Clarkson is okay. But their goal is to try and lure in free agents. Russell Westbrook will be a free agent at the end of next season. If DeMarcus Cousins does not sign a contract with the New Orleans Pelicans, he will be a free agent at the end of next season. His goal is to try and get one of those two guys. You have Russell Westbrook, who's an L.A. guy. He's from there. He went to UCLA for college. So possibly going back to his hometown, maybe. But that's what Magic Johnson is there to do. He's there to recruit people back to the Lakers organization. As far as this standpoint goes, you have to ask yourself, is Magic Johnson, the president of the Lakers, going to work? Well, you have a huge name. You have Magic Johnson, who's probably one of the top five most recognizable basketball players of all time. But it hasn't worked for other people who can say the same thing. Michael Jordan took over as the primary owner of the Charlotte Bobcats, which are now the Charlotte Hornets again. He hasn't brought anyone in to the franchise. And his draft picks, with the exception of Kemba Walker, have not been that great. People aren't excited and willing to go to Charlotte to see Michael Jordan. Why would they go to L.A. to see Magic Johnson? I realize it's L.A. It's a bigger market. One of the top two in the whole United States with New York. And that brings me to my next point. You have New York. You have Phil Jackson. 11 titles as a coach. Has coached Michael Jordan. He's coached Kobe Bryant, Shaq, Pau Gasol, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman. You name it, Phil Jackson has done it. He becomes the president of the New York Knicks. Nobody has gone to New York. He re-signed Carmelo Anthony, but nobody has gone to New York. And now nobody for sure is not going to New York, given what has happened the last couple of weeks. He blasted his star player on Twitter, and the owner is treating legends like Charles Oakley the way he is. Nobody's going to want to go to New York. So Phil Jackson came in there. Everyone's like, oh my God, Phil's going to attract everyone. Yeah, it hasn't really worked out that way. So given history on that side, it doesn't look good for Magic Johnson. But you have to look on the other side where it could work out. Look at what Danny Ainge is doing with the Boston Celtics. Been a fantastic general manager. 
got the big three there. The first time we saw really a big three, they won a title in Boston. He's doing good things with them now. There's a potential that Magic Johnson could be like what Danny Ainge is doing with the Celtics. Also, you have Larry Bird with the Pacers. The Pacers are having really a down year in my eyes this season, but they've pushed Miami with LeBron James to the Eastern Conference Finals two years in a row and went through a little period there where they were really, really relevant for a while. So the Pacers with Larry Bird have also had some success as well. So that's where Magic Johnson has some sort of leeway here. But for me, whether this works out or not is dependent on if you can bring in players. In this current day and age of the NBA, all these people care about is winning championships. The only way the Lakers are going to get a big free agent, in my eyes, is if they can offer more money as opposed to another team. Because people care about championships. Kevin Durant left OKC to go to Golden State and take less money because he wanted to win a ring. Look at the conference finals of last season, the top four teams. You had Oklahoma City and Golden State on the west. On the east, you had Cleveland and Toronto. So those were not technically the four best teams in the NBA, but let's just use them as an example because they were the last four teams left in the NBA. Toronto's not a big market. Cleveland's been the laughing stock of sports for the last 50 years, with the exception of the Cavaliers last year. Oklahoma City's not a big market. Golden State is the only big market technically left out there because it is the Bay Area. Bay Area is, I think, like number seven or six in the United States right now. Look at some of the big markets in the NBA. New York. You have the Knicks. You have the Knicks, sorry, and the Nets. Both of those teams are horrible. You have Chicago, who in my eyes is kind of a train wreck and going through the motions. You have LA. The Clippers are decent, but the Clippers with their current regime are not going to win a championship. And the, before that, the Clippers were the laughing stock of the league. You have the Lakers right now, who have screwed everything up the last five years because they gave Kobe Bryant that monster deal with two years left, and then he got injured. The same thing with Steve Kerr. I'm sorry, not Steve Kerr, Steve Nash, sorry. You had Steve Nash with that monster deal when he should have retired, and he obviously got hurt. You tried to bring in Dwight Howard to be that next big, big man in L.A. to go with the legacy of big men they've had. Wilt Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Shaquille O'Neal. You can maybe even throw Pau Gasol Gasol in that a little bit. You brought in Dwight Howard to be that guy, and he went to Houston. So the Lakers have screwed up the last five years. They're not any good. They've missed the playoffs three years in a row now, which is their longest stretch ever. Last year, they won 17 games, which was their worst ever in a season. This year, they've already won 19, which is not bad. They're turning things around slowly but surely, getting some nice young players. But it has not worked out. In this day and age, the players don't care about going to big markets. They want to go to where the teams are good. Everyone's chasing LeBron James in Cleveland. People are going to San Antonio. People are going to Oakland. That's a decent market, the Bay Area. But other than that... People are going to win titles. They don't care about going to the big cities anymore like they did 5, 10 years ago. So for me, the question is, can Magic Johnson turn it around? Sure, I think there's a chance. He's going to basically become a recruiter. But for me, the only way that happens is they have to get these young players to develop well. Because you're not going to lure in a big-name free agent who's going to be doing it by himself and trying to carry the team solely by himself. That just doesn't really work anymore. You need to have at least two, even three guys capable of forming a team, a super team, and building towards a title. That's the current regime in the NBA, and that's just kind of the way it is. So unless the Lakers strike goal with a couple of these young guys like Brandon Ingram and Julius Randle and even D'Angelo Russell, maybe they'll get, a, I mean, they'll get another top draft pick this year, which is going to be a really deep draft. And then maybe they can lure in a Westbrook or a DeMarcus Cousins at the end of next year. But that's, that's their only shot of succeeding here because people don't care about just going to L.A. anymore because it's L.A. That just doesn't really work out now. But Magic Johnson, he's definitely not wasting any time making moves because he even made a trade yesterday as president of the Lakers. The Lakers have sent six men, Lou Williams, to the Houston Rockets in exchange for Corey Brewer and an unprotected first-round pick. It doesn't say what year the pick is, so I'm just going to go off... Go off it saying it might be this year. 
The Houston Rockets are third in the West right now, so it would be a pick probably in the late 20s if everything goes right for Houston. And honestly, I think this is a win-win for both teams because you look at the side of the Houston Rockets. They're bringing in Lou Williams, who's been one of the better six men for his really entire career, and especially this season. He's averaging arguably his best season of his career. He's averaging 18.5 points a game. He's shooting 38.5% from three. You put him on the Houston Rockets bench... And he really pairs up with Eric Gordon, who's the reigning three-point contest champion, as kind of like a two-headed monster with the sixth man. Because he and Gordon are going to just come into the game and shoot threes, because that's what they do in Houston. So it adds another scorer and someone else who can stretch the floor with the Houston Rockets as they try to push the San Antonio Spurs and the Golden State Warriors for the top seed in the West. So I think it's a good move in that regard. And for the Lakers... They get another draft pick, which I'm going to say it's this season, which is going to be a really deep draft. Maybe they can strike some gold there. And they get a guy in Corey Brewer who will be a free agent at the end of next season, which will free up a little bit of cap room. And Brewer's not having a good season. He's only averaging about four points per game. So it was time for him to maybe go and maybe get a change of scenery. Corey Brewer's been an okay player in his NBA career. So maybe he can, with a better team, have a little more success with the Lakers. But nevertheless, I think it's a good move for both sides. The Houston Rockets get another score, Lakers get a draft pick, and maybe a guy who can benefit from a change of scenery there in L.A. We'll take our first break of the show. After the break, we're going to talk about college basketball, the games last night, games tonight. Really just going here, end of the season almost, conference tournament championships are coming up. Then we have Selection Sunday in March, a few weeks away. So really just updating you on what happened last night, who's playing tonight here in college basketball at the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back into the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Talking some college basketball here. Games last night within the top 25. Number 9, Baylor bounces back after their loss on the weekend to Kansas with a 60-54 to victory over the Oklahoma Sooners. Jonathan Motley was the top performer for the Baylor Bears. He had 21 points, 16 rebounds, and 5 assists to lead Baylor. They lost two games in a row now, but they, of course, bounced back at 23-5 and and 10-5 and within the Big 12. Number 11, Kentucky goes on the road to take on Missouri, and they win 72-62 to over the Tigers. Idris Adebayo, he had 22 points, 15 rebounds, and 3 blocks, did the big men for the Kentucky Wildcats. They kind of pulled away in the second half. They're only up by 1 at halftime, but they outscored Missouri, of course, by 9 in the second half. Missouri 7-20 and and only 2-13 and in the SEC. This game here for Kentucky sets up a big game on Saturday against number 13 Florida, who won it last night themselves as well over a good South Carolina team, 81 to 66. 66, sorry. Kevon Allen had 26 points, seven rebounds, and three assists for the Gators. Of course, Kentucky and Florida tied atop the SEC at 13 and two in conference play and 23 and five overall. So this game at Rupp Arena on Saturday will probably go a long way. In determining the regular season champion in the Southeastern Conference. Last night in overtime, number 14, Purdue holds on to win against Penn State 74 to 70. Dakota Mathias had 12 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 assists for Purdue. And Tony Carr was top performer for the Nittany Lions. He had 21 points, 7 assists, and 5 rebounds. Purdue 23 and 5 overall and 12 and 3 in the Big Ten Conference. And Wichita State, they are back ranked this week. They're number 25 overall, have another good season. 
They're 26 and 4 overall, and last night they defeated Evansville 109 to 83. Shaquille Morris was top performer for the Wichita State Shockers. He had 18 points, five assists, and five rebounds. When you look at games within the top 25 in college basketball tonight, got a nice few matchups here. So number 10 Duke is on the road against unranked Syracuse. Duke playing really well since Mike Shashevsky has returned back to the sidelines. Number three, Kansas, they'll be hosting at TCU. Have to see how Frank Mason III, Josh Jackson, and company can handle the Horned Frogs. Number 24, Maryland will be hosting unranked to Minnesota. Minnesota at 20 and 7 overall and 8 and 6 in the Big Ten. Having a good season, but kind of struggling in conference play. Number two, Villanova will host number 22, Butler. Have to see how Josh Hart and company can battle against the Bulldogs. That's a big matchup there in the Big East. Number 23, Creighton will battle against unranked Providence. The big matchup tonight is number 8, North Carolina at the Dean Smith Center. We'll be hosting number 7, Louisville. I really like North Carolina in this game. I think I think they'll be able to handle Louisville. Justin Jackson and company. I mean, Justin Jackson's having a great season. A really good stretch player. Can step out hit the 3. He's averaging 18.6 points per game. About 5 rebounds and 3 assists. Number 6, Oregon go on the road to take on Jabari Bird, Ivan Rabb and company with Cal. And that's it within the top 25 tonight. So we're, we're really grinding along. Conference tournaments, as I mentioned, are coming up soon. I'm really, really getting antsy for the NCAA tournament coming up because I feel like the field is really wide open. And I'm sure I'll talk about this more as we approach it and obviously as we break down the round of, I guess you can say 68 teams now because you do have the first four and everything. So... I really am excited because I feel like in college basketball this year, I feel like anyone can really win the tournament. Gonzaga are unbeaten, but I, f I really do feel like Gonzaga are the same team we've seen before. A team that's not really tested, and they come tournament time in the second round and the Sweet 16, they could really struggle. They do have Nigel Williams-Goss, who's a great player, but we'll have to wait and see on Gonzaga. I, I really do think the jury's still out on them. North Carolina are always good. Louisville are always tough. Oregon are good with Dylan Brooks. Villanova are last year's champions. You can't ever count them out. And to me, I think the team I like the most right now is Kansas. I feel like Kansas are just so strong. They have really good guard play, which kind of dominates in the tournament. You have to have really good guard play. So I feel like this tournament is really wide open, and it's going to be really fun to watch because I feel like there could be five to ten teams that could honestly come out on top and win the NCAA tournament, which always adds excitement. For me, the NCAA tournament is the most exciting thing in sports because of the uncertainty. It's a one-game season. Everyone starts 0-0. Zero and zero. You have the upsets and everything, and it's obviously a great, great fun and, and good for the sport and everything. So as we get closer to that, I'm going to really pay attention to some of these games in college basketball, see who's playing really well going into the tournament because I feel like the team that – the teams that are playing well going into the tournament have the most success. Teams that are kind of struggling limp and kind of limping into the tournament are the ones that are most vulnerable to the upset. So we'll have to wait and see, but nevertheless, I'm really excited about college basketball right now. We'll take our last break of the show. After the break, I'm going to talk about possible trade rumors in the NBA. We've already had some big bombs dropped on us. Of course, on Sunday, we had Boogie Cousins get traded from Sacramento to New Orleans. We had Lou Williams get traded yesterday. But there's a lot of guys that are on the block and rumored to be moving. Are the Boston Celtics going to make a move? They could be looking at someone like Blake Griffin, like Paul George, like Jimmy Butler. Should they make a move? Is Minnesota going to trade for Derrick Rose? Those are some rumors and more we'll talk about here at the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. We'll take our, first, we'll take our second break, and then we'll talk about those news, guys. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back into the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. It's our last segment before we say goodbye for today. 
Talking about some trade rumors. The trade deadline is, of course, tomorrow, February 23rd at 3 Eastern. So we're, I mean, we're a little over 24 hours away from the trade deadline going away in the NBA. So teams, this is their last shot. This is their last chance to get that one piece they may or may not need to build towards the NBA postseason or even towards their future. So let's talk some rumors here. So we're just going to maybe throw a ton of guys out here. Just some rumors. No confirmed deals, of course. But the Indiana Pacers are reportedly reaching out to the Philadelphia 76ers about acquiring second-year center from Duke, Jalil Okafor. Of course, the Sixers have really a log jam at the center position between Joel Embiid, Jalil Okafor, and Nerlens Noel. I don't see any way possible they're trading Embiid. He seems like he's going to be the cornerstone of that franchise for the next decade if he stays healthy. You have Nerlens Noel, who could be a decent backup and he's a guy who doesn't really provide much on the offensive side of the ball. So the Sixers have really shown that it's got to be Okafor who gives them the best chance to maybe get another top pick in this year's draft coming up and can maybe move somewhere else. And the Pacers are that team that looks like they're inquiring about the big men. Okafor in 38 games this season, of course he's missed some time with injury. He's averaging 11.5 points a game, about 5 rebounds, and, a, and just under or just over 1 block a game. So he's a guy who's done pretty well. Last season had some success. Of course, the Pacers are trying to just add people around Paul George because there's even rumors that he might go to Boston, among others. So, I mean, they're trying to add people around Paul George and really just make sure that the All-Star forward doesn't go anywhere except Indiana. So they're trying to get pieces around him. As far as Philadelphia goes, the Pacers have made it clear that they are willing to give up their first-round pick this year in the draft, which if there's ever a year you want to get a first-round pick, it's this year because this is going to be one of the deepest drafts we've had in the last decade. A team like Indiana, who's in the postseason right now, but they are seventh, so it wouldn't be a lottery pick, so probably a mid-level first-round pick, which is still not bad. I mean, the Sixers would have two picks within the top half of the the, th the 32, so that's not terrible. And they're just trying to really strike gold because they've done really well drafting. I mean, Joel Embiid, he's finally playing, but he's done really well. You have Jalil Okafor, who they drafted high last year and has really performed decently. So they're trying to just do whatever they can. And maybe the Pacers are that team. They're, they're trying to trade him there. There's rumors there. I think Jalil Okafor for sure does get traded by tomorrow, whether it be to Indiana or not. That's kind of left up in the air. But I think for sure that Okafor will be dealt. The, the The Sixers have been rumored of trading either him or Noel for the last year now. And neither of them have gone. So I do think that's going to be the case. And I, I think that Jill Okafor will get traded somewhere by tomorrow. Of course, on Friday, we'll have a really busy show breaking down the trade deadline. Because it will already still be going on by the time we're done in the studio tomorrow so we can't really update much unless official trades happen so on friday will be an action-packed show full of trade full of trades really so another trade rumor is the utah jazz have expressed some interest in bringing back darren williams who is currently with dallas and a guy they drafted during his time there after illinois so it looks like maybe on tuesday night is when these rumors came up and the dallas mavericks made it clear that Darren Williams and Andrew Bogut, who's the big man who came over from Golden State, are kind of available to other teams. I feel like Bogut is a potential player that a team could add to maybe get like that solid rim protector. Probably a team like Boston. Wouldn't have to give up much. He's a guy who's battled injuries throughout his whole entire NBA career. But other than that, he's been good. I mean, he can he can definitely be that rim protector, get some rebounds score close to the basket, get some hustle points. So for a team like Boston, I think he could be that missing piece to maybe challenge Cleveland. But as far as Darren Williams is concerned, the Jazz are trying to bring him back. He's 32 years old. He's only on a one-year deal for $9 million. So technically, he could be an expiring contract if he doesn't want to stay in Utah after this season if he does get traded. And the Jazz, are they're kind of struggling right now, but they're still a decent team. They're right in the middle there of the Western Conference. And they're trying to maybe get an extra piece, which Darren Williams def definitely best days are past him. But he could still definitely add to the team. And I, th I think he could still be a solid acquisition for Utah if they were to bring him back. He already knows the system there. He's familiar with the area. I mean, he lives in Salt Lake City in the offseason. So I think that could be an okay move for Utah. They have Gordon Hayward, 
I really like Rudy Gobert, the big man out of France. So that could be a decent move if they want to bring him back because there's there's some issues with George Hill who's starting there. He's had some injury issues. When the Jazz are playing with Hill, they're 23 and 9, but when he's not playing, they're only 12 and 13. So they could definitely use some guard depth. And Daryl Williams is an established NBA point guard. He's also a good good player and he can add some some depth to the squad. So that would be a decent move. They probably wouldn't have to give up much. I mean, he only is uh, on a one-year deal. He's averaging about 13 points and 7 assists during his time with Utah. So he's had success there and I think he could really do well. So and and honestly with with Dallas, they they do have a nice young point guard that they can maybe work through the ranks in Yogi Ferrell. He's averaging 15 points and 5 assists during a 7 game stint as a starting point guard for Dallas and they've gone 5 and 2 in that span. So they could look just to, to just get younger and get cheaper. I mean, Yogi Ferrell's done really well, the young man coming out of Indiana last year. So that could be okay. Some other quick rumors before we exit the show today. The Washington Wizards have shown some interest in Minnesota's Shabazz Muhammad. They're trying to get some more bench pieces. I feel like Washington are really one solid, solid elite player away from being a top team in the NBA. Great backcourt in Bradley Beal and John Wall. Otto Porter Jr. leads the NBA in three-point percentage this season. If they can maybe get someone like DeMarcus Cousins, if he doesn't sign his deal with New Orleans and goes as a free agent, if they can maybe sign DeMarcus Cousins, I think that'd be fantastic. You already have the backcourt, the shooters on the outside, then you could get a physical guy like Boogie inside to bang. He already has a familiarity and relationship with John Wall because they played at Kentucky their freshman years in college, and they're just good friends off the court as well. So that would be a great move, but Minnesota trying to add... I'm sorry, not Minnesota, but Washington trying to add some depth through Minnesota Shabazz Muhammad off the bench could be okay. Muhammad has never really developed into a top NBA player like he was valued at coming out of high school before going to UCLA, but he's a decent scorer off the bench, a guy who can maybe provide some spark off the bench for Washington and a guy who can step out and hit the three as well. The Cleveland Cavaliers, not really sure what they're going to do as far as trades are concerned, but they are working out big man Larry Sanders. Sanders last played with the Milwaukee Bucks. Decent year a couple of years ago, but he's he's just been really battling some injuries and he hasn't really done much physically to prove that he can get back to what he was with, with Milwaukee. But the Cavaliers are working him out. I mean, Sanders hasn't played since the 2014-2015 season. But if he can be healthy enough and provide something for the Cavaliers from a physical standpoint, because they need it right now. They're without Kevin Love for the next probably five, six weeks, depending on how things go. So they could use they could use some some big men inside their, their lineup and their roster. So before we leave, we'll talk about one more. It's the Boston Celtics. The Celtics are the one team at the trade deadline that everyone is kind of putting at the top of the list as far as what they are doing because the Celtics have honestly a lot to play with. They have the next two unprotected first round picks from the Brooklyn Nets. The Nets this season are the worst team in the NBA. So if if things go as planned and probability goes as planned, the Boston Celtics could have the number one pick in the NBA draft this season. The Nets are the worst team in the league. They have nine wins. They're not going to bring in anyone else for next year because they don't have their first round pick. So for the year after that, you have to imagine that pick is going to be at least in the top five as, again, and that would pick would go to the Celtics as well. So they have a lot to play with, do the Boston Celtics, and they're already a good team. You have Isaiah Thomas, Avery Bradley, Marcus Smart, Al Horford, Jay Crowder. They have nice pieces already. They're second in the East. But they have a lot coming in potentially if they draft accordingly, which Danny Ainge has done really well. He's always been a really good GM with the Celtics. But could they just decide that they don't want to do the whole drafting thing and just trade for someone who's really, really established? A couple of guys are on the market. The biggest one is Jimmy Butler with the Bulls. You have maybe Blake Griffin with the Clippers potentially Paul George, but Jimmy Butler's the one that makes the most sense to me if a deal were to be made. Jimmy Butler would require a lot, though. If the Celtics were to trade for Jimmy Butler, I'd imagine they have to give up at least one of those first-round picks, if not both, and a player, maybe even someone like Jay Crowder. But let's say, for instance, they bring in Jimmy Butler. You have Jimmy Butler and Isaiah Thomas and Al Horford. 
And then you have some decent players around them, like I mentioned, Avery Bradley, Marcus Smart. That could be a really, really good team that will legitimately challenge Cleveland because you have that really good small forward to guard LeBron James. Butler's a great defender. And you also have someone who's going to take LeBron James away from some of these other guys that he's going to potentially lock down. Maybe even like Isaiah Thomas. Could he even guard Isaiah Thomas in a postseason series? Possibly. Who knows? No one else on the Boston Celtics roster is going to really create their own shot except for Isaiah Thomas. So there is some potential that LeBron could guard him. If you bring in Jimmy Butler, though, that's not necessarily the case. So Jimmy Butler makes the most sense if they're going to make a trade. They're going to have to go up a lot, though, because of how good of a player he is. And he's in the prime of his career. You know, he's only in his mid-20s. If I were the Boston Celtics, what would I do, though? I would do nothing. I would not make a trade. People are going to get excited because they, of course, want to win now and try and push forward for as best as they can right now. But think about the Eastern Conference. You have Toronto, who's okay. You have Washington, who I like. They're okay. And then everyone's chasing the Cleveland Cavaliers. LeBron James is 32 years old. He's going on 33, 34 by the time some of these young draft picks the Boston Celtics make have a serious impact on their team. LeBron James will, will really be past the prime of his career and kind of on the decline at that age. So Boston could be that team with a lot of good young players to be that top team in the Eastern Conference. So what I would do is I would wait. I would trust the process as the Sixers have been saying. You've already drafted well and made great acquisitions in in Boston with Danny Ainge. You're going to get a top pick this year. Maybe you can get someone like Fultz or maybe Lonzo Ball. You have the potential top pick again next year to add to this roster with already a good young core. I would do nothing and just build for the future because you're not going to be really chasing LeBron James anymore in two, three years because he's, he might be done. I mean, I think LeBron, I hate to say it, but I think he could potentially become what Kobe Bryant was at the end of his career. Never legitimately been injured for a long time. And then your body just kind of gives up on you. LeBron James has been in the NBA 14 years already. By the time you count all the postseason games he's played, you can add on another two practically. So call him already a 16-year vet. I mean, LeBron is getting older by the minute and by the game. The Celtics could legitimately be that team to overcome an old LeBron James and challenge a team like maybe Golden State on the Western Conference. Who knows what's going to happen in New Orleans. The Spurs are always consistent. The Rockets are doing great with James Harden. But who knows where the NBA is going to be in two, three years. We just simply don't know. So if I was the Celtics, I wouldn't make a move. I would absolutely stick with what you have and trust the process. Trust the process, sorry. So that's going to be it for today, guys. I'd like to thank you again for listening. My name is Ben Brown. We are signing off here at the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Pauline will be in the studio tomorrow talking all things, I'm probably sure, trade rumors. And on Friday, I'll just really break down the deadline, all the top deals, players that moved, players that didn't move, and really grades for some of these some of these trades. So we'll talk about that tomorrow and Friday. Thanks for listening, guys, and have a good day. Goodbye. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program